Brothers and sisters fight over everything, from who gets the car for the weekend to who is more deserving of mom and dad's love. But these conflicts aren't confined to household squabbles. Some of the most destructive family battles ever waged had billion dollar companies and even entire nations hanging in the balance. Today, we're duking it out over some of the most bitter sibling rivalries in history. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the Weird History channel. Then let us know in the comments what other historic family feuds you would like to hear about next. Okay, let's take this outside. German brothers Rudolf Rudi and Adolf Adi Dassler were the sibling duo who created what would eventually become the Puma and Adidas shoe companies. Rudy was drafted in World War I, while his brother Adi was stuck at home, without even a first-generation iPhone to keep him occupied. This was when your options for keeping yourself entertained were limited to either pushing a hoop with a stick or starting a business. Adi began creating shoes in his mother's laundry room, and eventually pulled his older brother in to form the Dossler Brothers Sports Shoe Company. Adi's invention of adding spikes to the bottom of the shoes led to great initial success. But when World War II came around, it triggered a separate war between the brothers. Rudy refused to hire his nephews, hoping to keep other family members from controlling the company. As a result, those two boys were drafted and perished in the war. Rudy was also drafted and blamed Adi, who avoided the draft by being deemed essential to the business. Oh, and by the way, did we mention they were Nazis? Because they were. After the war, each brother tried to paint the other as the more despicable Nazi, which resulted in Rudy being briefly imprisoned. Shortly after that, in 1948, the brothers split up and separated their assets. Adi went on to form Adidas, a mashup of his first and last name. Rudy called his company Ruda, which eventually anamorphed into Puma. Commodus is the Roman emperor best known for being the bad guy and gladiator. And while that movie invents a whole lot of stuff about his life and reign, one thing from the movie is undeniably true. Commodus and his sister Lucilla did not get along. Before Commodus' crowning in 177 CE, rulers of the Roman Empire were chosen by merit, or at least some kind of political advantage. But Emperor Marcus Aurelius decided his son would skip the line and take over after he passed. This especially angered Lucilla, Commodus' sister. She was married to Lucius Verus, who happened to be her father's co-ruler and was the frontrunner for the throne before nepotism got in the way. So Lucilla did what any scorned sibling would do. She conspired with Roman senators to have her brother assassinated. The attempt failed, and Commodus had Lucilla and her daughter exiled to the island of Capri. Later on, Commodus decided that an island getaway was not the proper punishment, and had his sister done away with permanently. Better safe than sorry. Mary Tudor was the oldest daughter of Henry VIII. She was a devout Catholic when she succeeded her father on the throne, which was a bit of an issue since her dad had severed ties with Rome in 1534 to establish the Church of England. However, the whole reason he did that was to have his first marriage legally annulled, which meant that Henry's second daughter, Elizabeth, had a stronger claim to the throne. Royalty is complicated. Elizabeth represented a powerful and more importantly, Protestant rival to Mary I's interests. Even though they were buds as children, Mary and Elizabeth had grown apart, as competing heirs often do. Mary was able to deny Elizabeth any claim to the throne by having Parliament reinstate her father and mother's marriage. In 1554, after dealing with just a ton of Protestant plots to take her out, Mary finally accused Elizabeth of trying to overthrow the government and tossed her into the infamous Tower of London. But instead of executing her, Mary had Elizabeth imprisoned at Woodstock Palace, which actually sounds pretty groovy. Mary passed without an heir four years later, and Elizabeth became Queen Elizabeth I in 1558. John Wilkes Booth became famous for assassinating President Abraham Lincoln, but all he ever wanted was to be more famous than his older brother, Edwin. The two came from an acting family, where their father, Junius Brutus Booth, was one of the most famous Shakespearean actors of his day. They were kind of like the Baldwins, if Alec was the dad. Wait, is he not? By the time John graduated and was able to pursue acting, Edwin was already a successful actor in his own right. 
Edwin reserved the better cities for himself and limited his brother's opportunities. John already wasn't the best actor and was receiving scathing reviews for his performances while Edwin was thriving. The two brothers disagreed on politics as well. Edwin loved Lincoln, and John, ah, uh, didn't. John's time in the South also allowed him to become more radicalized. His attack on President Lincoln was meant to be a performance as well as a political statement. John theatrically jumped from the balcony to the stage, mirroring a move he had done in Macbeth while wearing his father's costume pieces. John's notoriety overtook the Booth name from that point on, which is fair. Edwin took a break from acting and refused to let John's name be spoken in his home. Pauline and Esther Epi Friedman were identical twins born in Sioux City, Iowa on July 4th, 1918. The two were close as children and even attended Morningside College together. In 1956, Esther started writing for the Ask Ann Landers advice column, which had been published since 1943. Ann Landers is just an identity shared by a series of people, like in that Billy Zane movie, The Phantom. That same year, Pauline moved to San Francisco and called up the editor of the San Francisco Chronicle with the claim that she could write a better advice column than their current columnist. She took the pen name Abigail Van Buren and started the Dear Abby advice column. The competing columns led to much conflict, mostly due to Pauline offering her column to her and Esther's hometown with the agreement that they would not print Ask Ann Landers. It was like the parent trap, if one twin was trying to destroy the other's career instead of getting their parents back together. This caused an eight-year rift, with a brief reconciliation in 1964 that quickly went back downhill until Esther passed away in 2002. Most modern breakfast cereals can thank the Kellogg line of products for their existence. But behind the scenes, a battle over who was the true Kellogg was being waged. John Harvey Kellogg and his brother Will Keith Kellogg were raised as Seventh-day Adventists. John became a believer in what he called biological living. He was a strict vegetarian who didn't consume alcohol, tobacco, tea, coffee. Basically, anything fun was out of the question. John began running a sanitarium in Battle Creek, Michigan in his mid-twenties, where his patients absolutely hated his health food kick. His attempts to design a plant-based breakfast eventually led to the creation of cornflakes. Despite inventing the definitive breakfast cereal, John was not interested in starting a business. He was focused on changing Americans' sinful eating habits and lifestyles. His brother Will saw an opportunity and bought the rights to manufacture the cereal from John. Will put cornflakes on the market in 1906, and it was an immediate success. However, John still wanted to charge his patients for cornflakes and began a legal battle against his brother over who should get to control the Kellogg name. Will won the fight and became one of the wealthiest people in the country by the 1930s. But the lawsuits took their toll, and the brothers reportedly rarely spoke once all the dust had settled. Richard and John were the sons of King Henry II and were no exception to the long tradition of royal siblings being pitted against each other like Brett and Owen Hart. Richard was the oldest, born in 1157 CE, to the ruler of England and its territories in France and Ireland. John was the fourth son, born in 1166, and passed over for a role in the family dynasty. It was his fault for showing up so late. John's prospects for the throne were slim, and his father regarded him as a failure, nicknaming him Blackland, which was a savage burn in the 12th century. But as fate would have it, middle brothers Geoffrey and Henry the Younger died prematurely. Henry used this as an opportunity to pit his sons against each other, but the brothers ended up allying against their father before his passing. Richard became king in 1189 and went off to join the Third Crusade, He'd planned to ban his troublemaking brother from England for a few years while he was away, sort of the royal equivalent of, stay out of my room while I'm at camp. But Richard's mother convinced him not to. As it turns out, he was absolutely correct to be suspicious of his brother. Once he left, John stepped into the throne and effectively ran the kingdom for three years, a period of time you may remember from all those Robin Hood films that keep getting made. John even tried conspiring with the French to fully take the throne for himself but all his attempts failed. Once Richard returned, John fled to France, but Richard eventually forgave his brother and even named him his heir. 
They were kind of a weird family. Considering this is the second time Henry VIII has shown up, it kind of seems like he was the problem rather than any sibling rivalry. Nonetheless, Henry wanted a line of male heirs and could not manage to seal the deal, which led to him having relationships with a series of women, uh, some of whom he had executed. Yeah, it really seems like he was the problem. In 1522, Mary Boleyn met Henry VIII when she was already married. Mary became Henry's mistress and gave birth to a son one year later. Many suspect this was Henry's illegitimate child, but there's no way to know for sure. If that wasn't soap opera enough for you, Henry was also pursuing Mary's older sister, Anne. Henry even went as far as to beg the Pope for a divorce before leaving Catherine in 1531 and marrying Anne in 1533. Mary's life went downhill after that. After being widowed, she married a commoner named William Stafford in secret in 1534. This was not a good look for the Boleyn family, namely Mary's sister, Queen Anne. Mary and William were banished from court, and even though they begged Anne for help, neither she nor Henry provided any. Meanwhile, Mary's son, who was possibly Henry's, was living under the care of Auntie Anne. Damn, that is cold. But Hank was nothing if not consistent in his wife-trading ways. After three years and no male heirs, Anne was on the outs. She was accused of adultery and incest, although both charges were almost certainly false, and she was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Mary never visited her, or even wrote her a single letter. Which is harsh, but Anne did take Mary's child and have her banished from court. When you write a check that big, it eventually is going to get cashed. Anne was executed in 1536. So what do you think? Whose side would you take in all these family feuds? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.